Hello everybody, how are you guys? We're getting so much great reaction and response to the series of community spotlights I'm doing on communities around Los Angeles. Now, we've done different cities and LA is the latest. We're going to be doing so many, so if you if your town hasn't appeared yet, uh, don't worry, we're going to get to it. We've done Pittsburgh, Columbus, Atlanta, and uh, li little bits of uh, other cities like uh, Charleston, etc. But this video is going to be on a town near L.A., a community spotlight on Pico Rivera. Now, Pico Rivera was incorporated from two different towns named da -da 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 Pico and da -da 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 Rivera to create the uh, new name Pico Rivera. And of course, Pico Rivera stands for little, like little stream or little brook. Little, uh, somebody said, well, no, it means little river. Uh, but that would technically be uh, Pico Rio, but hey, whatever you want to say. And the great thing about Pico Rivera is it's close to LA. It's like 11 miles from LA, but it's also, sort of, you know, not that far from Long Beach because of those eastern cities, uh, the way that the coastline is cut, you know, it's not, it's a pretty straight shot down to uh, Long Beach. And that's why Pico Rivera, the little river, the little stream or brook that runs through the town, uh, was used as a waterway in the early days to get, now, if, if, if you saw the videos or listened to the uh, audio of some spotlights I did previously, you'll remember that Monterey Park, which is near here, uh, near Pico Rivera, uh, was where they invented the potato chip bag, and then Montebello, which is also nearby, was where ranch dressing was invented. Now, as industrialization started to take place in the area, they needed to get the potato chip bag wax sheets, uh, wax paper sheets, up to Monterey Park, and they needed to get the ranch dressing, the chives, and all those ingredients to Montebello. And where? Did, how did they do that? Well, they did it on uh, the the waterway going going through Pico Rivera, basically the Pico Pico Rivera waterways. And now, at a certain point, they had to disembark because of the different factory locations and the and the uh, food service locations. In the case of Montebello around town and so they would they had Conestoga wagons we're talking about the very early days right we're talking in late 1800s early 1900s they had Conestoga wagons and they put all of those goods into the back of the wagon and then of course ride them to the different communities so Pico Rivera has been the lifeline really for a number of communities in the southeast and, and eastern part of Los Angeles for many many years and to this day uh, maintains that, that um, it's considered what they call a gateway city because it's in line with a number of communities that form uh, the gateway into Los Angeles from points west. And so it's really been almost a heartbeat city. It's, it's a lot where a lot of things come in and out, like blood flowing in and out of a heart. And you might say, well, this this part of town is like a left ventricle. This one's like the right aorta. However you want to make the analogy. Uh, but really, Pico Rivera has been the center of development and growth in the area for many, many years. Now, if you're a golfer, you should keep in mind that the Pico Rivera Municipal Golf Course, which was established in 1965, is a very quick play. So you can get in uh, a fast fast I won't even take it that long at all because the reason being it's only a nine hole course it's an executive par 29 nine hole course so what that means is uh there's probably two par fives on it I guess or maybe maybe it's mostly par threes and they and it's maybe like three par fours it just depends uh but however that adds up to 29 but what will probably happen is on the par fours, it'll be short enough that you will think that you can get there with your driver. So what will happen is even though it's a executive course in a very, uh, let's say, dense community. So in other words, there's a lot of players and a lot of people want to play. 
But what will happen is you will wait till the people are off the green on a par four, thus holding up the entire course because you think you can drive the green. Okay. And the let's say the, the green is 275 yards. Well, you haven't hit 275 yards in the last 15 years if you're of a certain age. And every year you lose a yard to two yards. So if you haven't played in a couple of years, you got to discount that off of you, the total in your head. So the point is, if you're of a certain age, you're not going to reach that green. Now, I know if you're young, you can do it. You can, But the problem is you can hit it that far, but can you hit the green? Or are you hitting it off the face of the earth wildly? The, hit, you could have hit a bird in the sky. You could hit the side of a barn. You could hit the side of that outhouse. You could hit the side of the of the uh, concession, the side of the pro shop. You could hit a light post. You could hit a cloud. Wait, you don't. You don't know where you're going. So why not play the hole with an iron, okay, or a three wood or something that's going to put you in the fairway that you can manage. But no, that I know that's not going to happen. Because in your brain, you're 15 years old and you could hit it 325 yards straight as an arrow. Well, guys, if you're over 18, those days are gone. You don't have that kind of accuracy. And the reason being, you're probably drinking beer on the course. And uh, any accuracy you had was gone three beers ago. So all I'm saying is if you go down to the Pico Rivera Municipal Golf Course, let Others enjoy the course. Don't cut off golfers like that driver just cut off that car, making him honk. I mean, he was in, he was a crazy person, I got. So, that's all I'm saying. Now, the good thing is the course is lighted, so you could go there at night. And hey, hey if the course is open, go crazy. Uh, hit it into the hit it into the darkness and hope that it ends up on the green. I mean. You know, go swing wild. Swing wild, child. Swing wild. Uh, so Pico Rivera, guys, is... Um, let's let's look at some stats, okay? It's 11 miles from the city, like I said. It's um, the eastern edge of the L.A. Basin and the southern part of the San Gabriel Valley. Uh, ports of Long Beach and L.A. of L.A. The ports of Long Beach and L.A. are both within uh, close proximity. And there are sixty to 70,000 people that live in the city. Now, you say, what do you mean sixty to 70,000? What's the number? Well, I mean, like all communities, it's constantly growing, expanding. People come there. People leave. You know, if you grew up there, maybe you, uh, your parents told you that they want you to become an accountant and uh, perhaps get a government job at the Pico Rivera uh, community, the government of Pico Rivera as an accountant in their accounting department. But but the thing is, it's like that song. She's a small town girl, but I got bigger dreams, right? Well, it's more of a hip, hip hop song. It's more of a rap, it's not lessons. But you get the idea. So, so maybe you wanna go to the big city of LA and take on the big dogs, the big cats, okay? Maybe you wanna run with the stylish crowd in Beverly Hills. I was just there last night and uh, Maybe you maybe you grew up speaking English, but you also learned French, and you want to walk around in Beverly Hills speaking French, like so many people are. Uh, I, I don't think half the people in Beverly Hills speaking French on the sidewalks that I hear actually know the language. I think they learn three sentences. I'm not saying I know the language. I should. I grew up in Canada. You're, you have to take French when you... When you are a student in Canada, you have to take French. It's a bilingual country. Well, maybe those are French Canadians walking around in Beverly Hills. I don't know. But you walk around Beverly Hills and half the people are speaking French on the sidewalk. And you're like, I'm looking at it like, you don't speak. You're not from, come on. But maybe they are. Or maybe from the from a French part of uh, California. Maybe there are counties in California where the French congregate. Okay, they they share stories about the old days and and uh, talk about uh, you know Macron Macron. 
Now, look, they probably have great food. Some of the best food I've ever had was in France. And they probably have great food wherever these uh, French counties are. I don't know where they are, if there are any. But anyway, so if you if you want to break away from your family, your family upbringing in Pico Rivera, you might move out of the city. And hence, that's what I say, a population of 60 to 70,000. It varies depending on the growth or withdrawal of, of population based on human goals, human interaction, human based on the people trying to make the best life they can. And maybe that necessitates, necessitates however you said, leaving the city. And vice versa, maybe it means moving to the city. Because Pico Rivera, guys, is a heart. It's full of heart. It's And because of its position in Southern California, it has been a central pivot point for commerce since the 1800s, guys, and to this day. I mean, you can, get, you can go to Pico Rivera and see trucks from all over the world. You see trucks from Russia, Sweden, Japan. I mean, you haven't lived till you've seen a, a Japanese truck with Japanese letters and advertising on the side driving down Pico Rivera next to a almost a similar ad. They're you know, attractive people on the side of the truck and they're eating the food that's inside that the truck is distributing. Right. So maybe it's tomatoes. And you see this Japanese guy biting into a luscious tomato. And then the funny thing is, you'll see the Russian truck by, drive by, and it's the same thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a Russian guy and a Russian girl on the side of the truck, but they're, they're also biting into the tomato. So it just shows the international reach of a city with the importance of Pico Rivera and has been for many, many years. You have to visit. Remember, you, I can only give you a taste of why these communities are so great but you have to get on a plane land at LAX get an Uber and come out to Pico Rivera we'll see you then